What's up guys, this is Out of Order, welcome back to the channel, and in this video I'll be showing you how to use After Effects and all of its basics so you can get started creating videos and compositing in no time. I've been using this program over 7 years, sadly, I know, I should probably switch to something better, but without wasting any more time, let's get straight into the video. I'll also have timestamps on screen as well, so you can jump to whichever category you're looking for, and I'll also have keyboard shortcuts too. So first things first, this is Adobe After Effects, it looks pretty confusing at first, but once you get the hang of it, it shouldn't be any problem. So first First things first, let's get started with interface. So for the interface, this is basically all you're gonna have. There's a few more windows we can open up, but we won't get into them in this video. These are the main things you're gonna be using. So over here, you have your project bin. So if you have any footage or any media or assets, this is where you dump it. To the right of the project bin, which will probably also be with the project bin like this, is your effects control panel. Now the title is pretty self-explanatory. This is where you're gonna control your effects settings, which we'll get onto later in the video. Ignore this part right here, since this is just a plugin I use for, it's called Mobar if you're in Interested. But over here to the right of it, we'll have a little preview window. Now, as you can see, we get the option to create a new composition or a new composition from footage. Now, a composition is essentially a timeline, which I'll show you how to make in the next part. But over here to the right of that, we got our little preview settings. Underneath the preview tab is where you'll have all your effects and stuff. And then above that is where you'll have your audio meters and as well as info about what you're viewing on the preview screen. Now, my After Effects layout is mostly default, but you can, of course, customize it too. Now, over here underneath the effects is where you'll have all your trackers stuff. I've made several types of videos for motion tracking. If you're interested, I'll have a playlist down below for all my tutorials. Underneath that is content aware fill, which we'll get into in another video. But without wasting any more time, let's create a composition. So a composition is essentially a timeline. So if you click this button over here to create new composition, you can name it whatever you want. So I'll just call it tutorial. And then over here is where you can choose the size of your composition. Now you typically want to make this whatever you want your final export to be. So I'll do 1080 for this video. Frame rate is pretty self-explanatory. It's how many frames per second your video is now you can of course change this all later on but for now we'll just do 1080 frame rate 60 and then the duration of the composition we'll just do like a minute or so. so once you have all your settings click ok now as you can see this will open up a new composition and your preview window will be up here so as you can see this big window down here is your timeline which is where you'll drag all your media and stuff and you can scrub through it like this you can of course press spacebar to play spacebar to stop playing which will bring it back over here now you can of course change all these settings as well so we'll go into what these do in a minute but for now let's import an actual footage to work with so i'm just going to import this clip right here so i'm going to drag it over to our little project bin and then we can drag it onto the timeline now if you want you can also drag this into this composition icon over here and it'll create a composition with the exact same settings as your footage so now that we have our clip in here i'm going to move it to the start of our timeline so to do that we're just going to drag it over here i'm going to click on the clip and then if you press the left bracket key it'll go to wherever your cursor is so if i go over here press the left bracket if i go over here press it it's going to bring it and if i do the right bracket it'll go to the end of the clip so if we do it here here or here it's going to move it to the end so now that we have our clip imported in the timeline you're probably wondering how do i move in the timeline so if you hold alt on your keyboard and mouse wheel you can zoom in and out of wherever your mouse is pointing at so if i go here i can zoom there if i go here i can zoom there and you can also use the middle mouse button so if you press down on the middle mouse you'll get your little hand icon you can switch that tool over here as well if you just want to you know, drag it around like that but middle mouse will allow you to drag around throughout the timeline so for previewing and after effects there's different ways to do that like i said you can press spacebar to stop and play but up here if you go to cache before playback if you have that turned off your after effects is just going to play a video normally however if performance slows down it might lag a bit here and there if you don't want it to lag you can turn on cache before playback and it's going to render the whole thing out first like a little preview of it and then it'll play it after once it's complete now i usually switch between this a lot but most of the time i keep it off so i can just play it in real time most of the time another thing you can do to fix lag is change the resolution it plays at so right now i have mine set to auto so if i have it at auto if i go down here I can choose whatever resolution I want it at. Full is going to have it in full quality, which is going to make it run a little bit slower, and quarter is going to be at quarter of the quality, which runs a bit faster. You can, of course, zoom in and out of your preview window as well by hovering over it and using the mouse wheel. And if you middle mouse click, you can also drag around like how we can on the timeline. But for now, I'm going to keep the preview window at fit so that the whole preview is always on screen. So now you got your footage imported, and you're probably wondering how do I cut it up or how do I do this and that. So if you want to cut up your footage, this is a unique thing about After Effects. So to cut the 
footage, let's just cut it right here when he shoots the guy. If we go over here and press Control shift d that's gonna cut your clip right here. And drag this out like this. And you'll notice right away that the clip is on a whole new layer almost. So as you can see, we can't drag it down and then just have it like almost split up like a normal timeline. Because After Effects isn't like a normal video editor like Premiere or Vegas Pro or DaVinci. You can't have different tracks all on one layer. Instead, throughout After Effects, you'll have many different compositions all stacked on top of each other and all your layers will also be stacked up, usually going at an incline. Now this might sound weird at first and you're probably confused or upset, but honestly, this is a good workflow to have. So you don't need to worry about having all things all bunched together and then just having like a normal timeline. Like instead, it's better to just work how After Effects wants you to work, which is to just have many different layers. Sometimes I've gotten projects in the thousands of layers. So now that we got a clip imported, you're probably wanting to do effects or do some motion graphics and such. So let's get on to that. So the first thing I like to do is make sure these options are enabled. By default, these will probably be disabled and you won't have these features right here. However, if you enable these, you get more features in terms of like what the layer's properties are. So I usually keep it like this and these options are extremely useful. So over here, for example, is our 3D option. So we can have our layers in 3D and we can have a 3D camera as well. So if we want to do some depth movements or have 3D layers or 3D lighting, we can use this over here. The next tool over here is mostly used for adjustment layers, which I'll go over into the next part. And over here is our motion blur. So if we animate the position, rotation, or scale, or any other 3D aspect to the layer, there will be motion blur and it'll just essentially blur all the movement. And over here is frame blending interpolation. So if you want to have your frames warp or if you want to have resampling and stuff like that, you can use this. And these other options over here are a bit more advanced, so I'll probably cover them in a future video. So on to the rest of the tools. I'll explain what they do very briefly. So over here is your selection tool. This is pretty self-explanatory. This is what I use the majority of the time. It allows you to select layers and such. Over here is our hand tool, which is essentially just middle mouse clicking to move around. And then over here to the right of that is our zoom tool. Pretty self-explanatory. You can select an area to zoom in on. These tools over here are grayed out, but those are our 3D tools. So if you want to pan, orbit, or like tilt and roll, you can do that in 3D space. However, that's a whole nother tutorial. To the right of that is our rotation tool, which is pretty useful. And to the right of that, we have our anchor point tool. Now the anchor point is essentially the center point of whatever your layer is. So for example, the anchor point by default is always in the middle. But if I move it over here and select the rotation tool, it'll rotate around the anchor point instead. To the right of that is our shape tool, which is useful for selecting different shapes. So if I hold click on this, I can get more options like a, let's say a polygon tool. And I can just simply make shape masks over the layer. You can also create shapes with it too. To the right of that is our pen tool, which is used for masking. This is a little bit more advanced, so I'll get to this in a future video, but you can also make shapes with it as well. Next up is our text tool, which we can to type text and such, so I'll just type test for an example. Next up, we have our paint tool, which is pretty useful for drawing on different layers and such. Coming up after the paint tool is our clone stamp tool. Now, if you've ever used the clone stamp tool in Photoshop, it's pretty similar. It allows you to stamp out different parts of the layer, so if I select the sky over here, holding alt and drag over here, I can paint over it, which is another advanced thing, which we'll get into in a future video. We also have the eraser tool, which is self-explanatory for erasing different brushes and such. We also have the roto brush tool, which is useful for editing out objects as well, which is another thing we'll get into in a future video and the puppet warp tool which is used for warping different joints and such so that is a very fast summary of all of these tools most of them are pretty advanced and pretty hard to use so i might cover them in future videos but for now that's a brief explanation all right next thing we're going to cover is effects so if we go over here we have a ton of different effects you probably won't have most of these since i have a ton of plugins installed but i'll use a normal effect for example that's pretty easy to use so if we go up here we can search for whatever we're looking for and i'm just going to search up a glow so if we go to stylize over here we can get a glow effect applied. Now over here on your effect controls panel, you'll be able to adjust the settings for the glow. We can mess with the threshold over here. So if we want more areas to be glowed, we can do that. And also change the color here as well. So if I go over here to glow colors, instead of original colors, we'll do A and B. Now all of this stuff can be animated too. We'll get into keyframe animation in the next segment, but for now, let's just add some more effects. So another thing we can do is do an adjustment layer, which is pretty easy. So instead of having to put this glow on both these layers, so let's say we got a glow here. We want the glow here as well. And we want them to have the same settings, we can do that with adjustment layers. Now, if you have a hundred different clips in your timeline, it can be a pretty big pain to add one effect to all of them. So to do that, we're going to add an adjustment layer. So let's go here and we're just going to go up here, delete the globe. And if we go up here to the top, we can do layer and then we can make an adjustment layer. Now you can also use the keyboard shortcut control alt y to make an adjustment layer on your timeline. So I'm just going to control x to delete that. Now over here, we have our adjustment layer. Let's add the same glow onto it as well. Now, if you go back to our effect controls, we can increase the radius and the threshold and everything like that. Now, as you can see, it's going to apply everything below it. So as you can see, we got our layer over here. It's being applied to it. But if I go over here, this layer isn't affected because the way After Effects
text works is in a layer format from top to bottom. So if I drag this below the adjustment layer, we'll get the same glow applied to both of them now, which is pretty nice. Now, another thing we can do is also create a background over here. So let's say we want some text over here on this part and we'll type out the word title. So we want the text to be between these two clips. So what we can do is go over here to the start, control shift, go to the end, control shift D, and then we can delete both of the layers over here. So delete that one and delete that one. Now, if we drag it below the adjustment layer, it'll be affected by glow as well. Now, let's say we want to move the position of the layer. So we can go over here to the pointer tool or by pressing V and we can drag it around to the center of the clip. An easier way to do this would be to do the align tool, which is down over here. So if I go here, I can align vertically and align horizontally. Now your align tool might be in a different position. Mine is over here because I manually moved it there. So it might be over here. So now that we have our title in the center of the frame. We can also resize it by pressing the S key and that'll bring up your scale over here so we can scale it down. And you'll notice that it's scaling to the anchor point. So if we want to center the anchor point to the center of the text, we can press control alt home and that'll make the anchor point over there, which we can now resize it over there as well. There's also a lot more options to do instead of scale too. So if I open this drop down over here, you'll get your layer settings. Now each of these clips have layer settings as well. And over here we get the transform setting for all of them. Now text has an extra menu because it's text. You get more options like animating the letters and such. But down here over in transform, we can do a lot of different options. So let's say we want to make a background underneath this text. Now to do that, we can go up to layer, new, and instead of doing an adjustment layer, we can do a solid. Or instead we can press control Y. Now control I will open up the menu for making the solid so we can change the solid width and height, which I recommend keeping it the same as your composition. And we can also change the color of it. However, I recommend keeping it black because we can do this in a much better way, which I'll show you right now. So if we press OK, we can make the solid and we'll drag it below the text. Now underneath the title is the solid and we can add whatever effect we want onto it. So for an example, I'll just do a ramp, but we can add a gradient ramp over there. And the glow is going to affect the ramp too because it's below the adjustment layer. So the end color, let's just make it a maybe a blue for an example. So if we do something like that, we get this nice little background and the title above it. Now there are a ton of different effects you can and after effects so feel free to explore through these and see what works best so if you've made it this far you're almost done with the tutorial the last thing i want to show is animation so if you go to effects and if you go to scale which by pressing s it'll open this here you'll notice that almost every effect has a stopwatch icon now what that stopwatch icon means is it means you can add a keyframe and animate it scroll over here middle mouse over there so if we go up here and click this icon it'll make a keyframe open this layer up go to effects you'll notice there's a new tab for glow and over here you'll see glow and intensity and there'll be a little dot over there now that means that there is a point in time that is going to mark that effect settings now obviously you don't want to have this whole drop down open so what we can do is close that open the layer and press the u key and that'll open only the keyframes you have on that layer so if we go over here make a keyframe over there and go to the end you can increase the glow and what it's going to do is it's going to animate between them so over at the start we had the glow at a lower intensity so if we go here it's going to start increasing and it's just going to expand more now we can do this with every setting up here. So let's say we want the threshold to expand too. So if I go over here, we'll make the threshold something like 80, for example, and then we'll keyframe that. So click that stopwatch icon, press U again to update it. And as you can see, our threshold shows up as well. And if we scroll to the end and lower this 25, for example, and so now both of them are animated. So if I play them out, you'll notice that we have a little animation. Now, obviously this isn't a really good animation. However, you can get really creative with this and animate a ton of different effects and animate scales as well. So let's say if I go to the layer, press s on the keyboard add a keyframe at the start then we'll just do zero for example at the end and over here we can even expand it more now what we can do as well is add the little motion blur icon and as you can see now our clip scale is animated as well and it shrinks down so now we're on the final part of the tutorial which is exporting so before you export i recommend saving or you can just press ctrl s to save now another thing i didn't mention earlier is the work area so if you only want to preview a certain part or render a certain part you can drag these two little handles out so if i zoom out there's one over here as well and we can drag these out over here to select the area we want to work in or the area we want to render now there is a faster way to do this you can press the b key to select the start of it and press the n key to select the end of it we'll just render this part right here now there are two main ways to render if you go to the top you go to export you can export by adding it to adobe media encoder which is adobe's own rendering software or you can do render cube now i usually do render cube because it's inside of after effects and you don't need to open a whole nother program so if we 
we go to add to render queue and you'll see your little composition down here so if we go to render settings we can open this up now for render settings i recommend keeping the quality at best resolution at full unless you're doing like a really fast preview and you don't need full quality but for this we'll just do full and then down here i usually recommend keeping these on for checked layers because that just means if you have motion board enabled for that layer it'll only do it for that layer which is pretty useful now for time span you can render the whole composition or the work area only frame rate i recommend keeping this i use for comps frame rate unless you have another frame rate in mind now i recommend keeping all the stuff up here for current settings proxies we can go into that in another video but for now we'll just hit okay now the output module is what the format's going to be so if we open this up you'll see a bunch of different options here now if you go to the format you can render in any of these formats available now i usually do avi however avi is not going to play back fast in windows because it's uncompressed almost and if you want to render an mp4 you'll need to use adobe's media encoder or you can download a plugin like after codex which costs money however i have it right here to render mp4 but for this tutorial i'll do avi now for video output you don't really need to change any of these settings unless you're doing images so if you want to render an image or a video with transparent background you'll, you can go down here and do rgb plus alpha however only a few formats support this like png or mov you can change the audio format settings as well down here and you can change the format settings down here as well so if you want a specific codec to render in and then we'll hit okay and then down here we go to output two then we can title the export whatever we want so i'll just do test right here and then we click on save and then once we're done we're pretty much done and all we got to do is render now so if we click on render it's going to start exporting it into a video or whatever format you choose and that's the end of the video guys if you've made it this far i hope you learned something new and i really hope you enjoyed the video so leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new guys i make videos on editing and all sorts of other cool stuff this is mainly a beginner's basic guide to after effects my editing discord editing pack and social medias are all in the descriptions down below if you want to follow and stay up to date with my content and if you do decide to purchase my editing pack you'll get a ton of presets and a ton of project files and it really does support the channel but nevertheless thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video boys peace out Credit cards and scammers, hitting the licks in the van. Legacy.